There was Surprise Valley. There were caves in the rocky walls of Surprise Valley. Venters carried the girl to one of them. He fetched water from the stream. Venters washed the girl's face very gently. He pulled off her leather boots and washed her feet. He looked at the wound in her shoulder. The wound has stopped bleeding, Venters told her. In a few days you will be better. You shot me. Now you are helping me. Why? asked the girl. I'm sorry. It was a mistake, Venters said. Rest now. The girl smiled and closed her eyes. Venters looked at her. Who was this beautiful girl? Who was Old Ring's masked rider? The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Four days went by. The girl slept in her quiet cave. Venters caught rabbits and birds and cooked them, but the girl ate nothing. She had a fever and called out in her sleep. Her face and hands were very hot. On the fourth day, the fever had gone. The girl was pale and very thin, but her dark blue eyes were calm and clear. Venters made some soup and fed the girl. After three days, she was able to stand up. She could walk a few steps. Why are you a rustler? Venters asked Bess. Rustlers are thieves and killers. But you, I did not steal. I did not shoot anyone, Bess replied quickly. I only rode with them. But how did you become a rustler? I don't know, said Bess. I've always been a rustler, but I hated living with them. I hate the rustlers. And Old Ring? Venters asked Bess. Do you hate him? The girl looked down. Her face was very sad. Old Ring was good to me, she said, but I never wanted to be a rustler. Then I will help you, Venters said. We both want different lives. You want to get away from Old Ring. I want to get away from the people of Cottonwoods. Let us leave Utah. We can have happier lives somewhere else. The days passed. Venters went to every part of Surprise Valley. Bess grew stronger. Every day she walked with Venters. Bess loved the freedom and beauty of Surprise Valley. Have you always lived with rustlers, Bess? Venters asked one day. I don't know, Bess replied. I can't remember. Perhaps I lived with women and children long ago. Did Old Ring treat you well? Was he kind to you? Venters asked Bess gently. Yes, always, Bess replied. Why did Old Ring steal Jane Witherstein's red herd? Venters asked. Do you know, Bess? The men of Cottonwoods asked Old Ring to steal the herd, Bess replied. They wanted to frighten her. The people of Cottonwoods don't like strong women. That's true, Venters replied. Days passed. There was plenty to eat in the valley, but Venters was tired of eating rabbit. He wanted some beef. He decided to steal some cattle from Old Ring. Every night that week, Venters left Surprise Valley. He went to Oldring's hideout. Each time, he brought back a small steer. He hid the cattle at the end of Surprise Valley. It was very hard work carrying the steers up to the valley, but Venters was young and strong. Bess never heard him go. She was asleep in her cave. She heard nothing. On the last night, Venters killed a steer. He brought the meat back to the caves. In the morning, Bess came out of her cave. Venters smiled at her. Would you like some beef to eat? Venters asked. Yes, but there are no cattle in this valley, replied Bess. What about this? Venters said. He pointed to a piece of beef. And come and look. Venters took her to the end of the valley. Cattle, Bess cried. Where did they come from? From Oldring. I stole them, Venters replied. You went to the rustler's hideout? Bess asked in horror. When did you go? At night. You were asleep, Venters replied. But the rustlers always watch their herds, Bess said. And they all have guns. He must never go back. She was angry. Bess, I promise I won't go there again, Venters said quietly. For the first time, Burn Venters looked closely into the girl's dark blue eyes. She was very gentle and beautiful. Bess, he said, I have something to tell you. 
We can leave here. We can try to get out of Utah. But it will be dangerous. Or we can stay here. What do you want to do, Bess? To go or to stay here with me? To stay, Bess replied. Venters walked away. He looked down into Surprise Valley, their valley. Bess waited for Venters to speak again. If we are going to stay, we will need supplies. We need flour, coffee, and sugar, Venters said. I must go to Cottonwoods. Will you... will you come back? Bess asked. I'll come back in four days, Venters told her. I will come back. I promise. But you will see old friends. Perhaps a woman, Bess said sadly. Look at me, Bess, Venters said. Nothing will stop me coming back, except death. You are very good to me, Bess said. I don't know why. I'm lost and nameless, but I do know that for the first time I am a happy woman. Before you go, I want to thank you, and I want to say I love you. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Lassiter was working for Jane at Cottonwoods. Each night he slept on the sage. He did not speak to the men of Cottonwoods. Lassiter, I don't see you very often, Jane said to him one day. I have a lot of work to do. I'm your rider, Lassiter replied. He smiled. But you can't stay out on the sage all the time. Jane replied. I want to talk to you every day. Why? Jane decided to tell the truth. You hate my people, Lassiter, she said. I want to stop you hating them. That's what I reckoned, Lassiter said quietly. Then talk to me more, Jane said. That could be a little dangerous, Lassiter replied. Why? Are you afraid of me? No, I'm not afraid, Lassiter said. But you are a very beautiful woman, Jane. Jane did not answer. Many men said that they loved her. Many men wanted to marry her. Was Lassiter falling in love with her too? Jane decided to find out if he loved her. Would he do what she wanted? Would he give his guns to her? Lassiter, she said softly, may I take your guns? Why? Lassiter was angry now. His strong hands held Jane's hands. Let me have your guns, Jane repeated. Why? Lassiter said again. I want to stop you from killing my people, Jane said. Lassiter said nothing, but he pushed Jane's hands away. His face was hard and angry. Lassiter turned slowly and walked away. Jane was very unhappy. She waited for Lassiter to come back. He did not. But that day Jane had a visitor. He was a fat, gray-haired man. He was the leader of her people. His name was Dyer. Dyer was angry with Jane. Why is Lassiter working for you? Dyer asked. Why do you bring strangers to Cottonwoods, Jane Witherstein? Why are you not married to one of your own people? Why will you not marry Tull? Jane said nothing. She was afraid of this man. Why did Lassiter come here? Dyer went on. Why did he come to Cottonwoods? Do you know? Yes, Jane said, but I will not tell you. Will not? You must, Dyer shouted. Jane had to answer. Dyer was the leader of her people. Lassiter came here to see Millie Earn's grave, Jane said, and he came here to kill a man, the man who brought Millie here. Dyer's face went white with fear. Then, after a moment, he smiled. Ah, uh, I understand. Dyer said, you do care about your people. You are a clever and beautiful woman, Jane Witherstein. You plan to make Lassiter love you. Then he'll stop killing your people. Jane did not hear Dyer's words. She was listening to another sound. Slow, heavy footsteps. Lassiter! Dyer turned. He pulled out his gun. There was a flash of light and a loud noise. 
Jane cried out and fell to the ground. A few moments later, Jane opened her eyes. Lassiter was gently washing her face. There was smoke in the air and blood on the ground. Jane gave a cry and covered her eyes. It's all right, Jane, Lassiter said. You're not hurt. You fainted. Did you kill Dyer? Jane whispered. Who, the fat man? No, I didn't kill him. But the blood. Don't worry, Lassiter said. I heard shouting, so I came back. Dyer got out his gun and tried to shoot me. I didn't want to kill him, so I shot him in the arm. He dropped his gun. I told him to go, and he went. Jane looked into Lassiter's calm gray eyes. Dyer tried to shoot you, but you didn't kill him? She said. That's right, Lassiter replied. Jane kissed his hand. Lassiter turned away quickly. Don't do that. Don't be cruel, Jane, he said. Lassiter began to walk up and down. I heard what Dyer said, Lassiter said. Your friendship's a trick. You pretended that you liked me, but this was to stop me from killing your people. I'm sorry, Lassiter, Jane said. What you say is true. At the beginning, I was thinking of myself. I tried to make you care for me. I wanted to stop you killing my people. But now... Did you? Lassiter said. Well, I'll tell you what you did. You made me love you, Jane. Lassiter! Jane cried. I have something to tell you, Jane. Lassiter said. Millie Earn was my sister. And I loved her. Then I met you. Now I love you, too. Millie Earn was your sister... Jane said, Oh, Lassiter, I'm so happy. But I didn't expect you to love me. Didn't you? You're trying to trick me, Jane, Lassiter said in a hard voice. You want me to give up my guns, but your people carry guns. Dyer tried to kill me. This is a dangerous time and a dangerous place, Jane. Men must have guns here. Oh, but guns and killing are wrong, Jane cried. I have no friends in this terrible place. No. You have a friend. Me, Lassiter said gently. I am your friend, Jane. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. The hot summer days went by, and Lassiter stayed at Cottonwoods. Jane Witherstein had more enemies now. More of her cattle were stolen. Jane's servants watched her all the time. They told Dyer everything. Lassiter was Jane's only friend. It was August, and it was very hot. The trees around Cottonwoods were still. There was no wind. Jane was standing outside her house. She was sad and worried. Suddenly there was a sharp sound, a shot. Jane went pale. Was someone shooting at Lassiter? Jane listened. Then at last, she heard Lassiter's slow footsteps. Lassiter came nearer. He took off his black hat. He had a scarf around his head. The scarf was wet with blood. Lassiter, what's the matter? Jane cried. Are you badly wounded? I reckon not, Lassiter replied in his slow, calm way. It's only a small cut. Oh, Lassiter, Jane said. It's dangerous for you here. You must leave Cottonwoods. And leave you alone, Jane? Lassiter said. No, I said I would help you. I'll stay. Jane was pleased. She was afraid of her own people. Tull and Dyer were against her, and she knew they hated Lassiter. Let me wash that cut, Jane said. Lassiter held up his hand. Listen, he said. I can hear a horse coming. Lassiter turned. His hands were on his guns. Jane listened. That's Wrangell, the horse I gave Venters. Don't shoot, she cried. Jane and Lassiter watched the huge horse galloping through the trees. It came up to the house and stopped. Jane stared at the rider. He had long fair hair and a beard. Then Jane gave a cry. Burn Venters! Jane, it's good to see you, Venters said. Yes, it's me. Hello, Lassiter. Jane and Lassiter were staring at Venters. Venters laughed. I've changed, he said. But so have you, Jane. You look pale and tired. And someone's shot at you, Lassiter. I was shot at, too. 
Out there on the sage, what's happening here? Jane told him everything. Venters looked at Lassiter. Why didn't you kill Dyer? He asked. I didn't want any more trouble for Jane, Lassiter said quietly. Jane turned away and smiled. Well, Jane, Venters said, I found your red herd, but you won't get it back. Tull is working with Oldring, I'm sure of that. I'm going to see Tull, Venters went on. I'm never coming back here, Jane. I'll tell Tull that. Then perhaps he will leave you alone. If I'm here, it's too dangerous for you. Burn, said Jane. You must not shoot Tull. Promise me, please. I can't promise that, Venters replied. But I don't want to kill him. I've decided to go away forever, Jane, Venters went on. I cannot stay here with you at Witherstein Farm. I found a valley, beyond Deception Pass. I call it Surprise Valley. It's a wonderful place, safe, too. I plan to live there, but I need supplies. Can you give me some flour, coffee, and sugar, Jane? Jane was sad that Venters was leaving, but she did not try to stop him. Take anything you need, Byrne, Jane said. Food, drink, and clothes, too. Thank you, Jane, Venters said. Now I'm going into the village. I'm going to find Tull. I'll walk there with you, Lassiter said quietly. Jane went into the house. She was unhappy. But she knew Venters and Lassiter would not kill anyone. Later, Lassiter returned alone. He saw the fear in Jane's eyes. Don't worry, Lassiter said. Venters is safe. He's waiting out on the sage. Did Byrne find Tull? Jane asked. Yes, he did, Lassiter replied. I don't think Tull was very pleased to see us. Where was Tull? He was in the village meeting room. All the men from Cottonwoods were there. Dyer, too. They all had guns. What happened? The men stared at us, Lassiter said. They didn't speak. Then Venters spoke to Tull. Venters said he was leaving Cottonwoods forever. He called Tull a thief because he stole your red herd. Venters said he wouldn't kill Tull today, but if he met him again, he would shoot him like a dog. What did Tull say? Jane asked. Nothing, Lassiter replied. I reckon he was too afraid. Jane began to cry. Don't cry, Jane, Lassiter said quietly. Venters spoke well. He's a good friend, but stay inside the house today. You're safer there. <laughs> The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. That evening, Venters said goodbye to Jane. He rode away on Wrangle. Two donkeys carried his supplies. Lassiter said he would ride with Venters for a while. Jane sadly watched the two men go. Perhaps she would never see Burn Venters again. Darkness came. At last, Jane slept. She woke suddenly. Someone was outside her window. Jane, Jane, Lassiter was calling quietly. Jane opened the window. It's all right, Lassiter told her. Venters got away. He's safe now. I'm going after him, Jane, Lassiter went on. I want to find his secret valley. Venters says no one will be able to follow him there, but I think I can follow his trail. Stay near the house, Jane. He'll be safer there. I'll come back soon. Forget me, Lassiter, Jane said quietly. I've brought you enough trouble. Lassiter smiled. Then he walked away. Dawn came at last. There was no sun. Dark clouds covered the sky. Jane felt frightened and alone. The next day, there was bad news. Jane's white herd was gone, taken by rustlers. Jane heard the news, but she did not care. She wanted Lassiter to return. Lassiter rode away from Witherstein Farm on Jane's horse, Bells. He followed Venters for 120 miles, all the way to Surprise Valley. In the valley, Venters was taking the supplies off the donkeys. Bess was helping him. Venters carried the last bag into his cave. 
Then he heard Bess scream. Venters ran to get his guns, and there was Lassiter. Lassiter was staring at Bess. Lassiter, thank God it's you, Venters cried. How did you get here? Well, I followed your trail, Lassiter replied. You must be careful. I'm a friend, but an enemy could find you too. That's bad, Venters said. I thought we were safe, but I'm pleased to see you, Lassiter. This is Bess. Lassiter shook hands with the girl. I'm not staying long, Lassiter said. Can I have something to eat? Then I'll leave you. Lassiter did not speak to Bess, but he looked hard at the girl. Soon Lassiter was ready to go. He said goodbye to Bess. As Lassiter walked away, Venters followed him. Lassiter stopped. He looked hard at Venters, but said nothing. Lassiter, I couldn't tell Jane about Bess, Venters said. I didn't know what to tell her. But Lassiter, I love this girl. Who is she? Lassiter asked. I must tell you, Lassiter, Venters said. That girl was Old Ring's masked rider. But I believe she is good. Lassiter was surprised. Tell me about her, he said quietly. Venters told Lassiter the girl's story. He told Lassiter that Bess had lived at Old Ring's hideout. She had lived there since she was a young girl. Lassiter listened to Venters in silence. I love Bess, Venters said at last. I want to marry her, but I'm afraid to take her out of this valley. Maybe I can help you, Lassiter said. Old Ring often comes to Cottonwoods. I'll ask him about the girl. I reckon he'll tell me the truth. Tell Oldring that Bess is dead, Venters said quickly. Bess wants to forget her life with the rustlers. I will, Lassiter replied. And don't tell Jane about Bess, Venters went on. I'll tell her myself one day. Lassiter promised. Then the two men walked to the balancing rock. Lassiter put his strong hand on the huge rock. Be careful, Venters cried. If that rock falls, we'll be here forever. Lassiter took his hand away. He smiled. All right, he said, but I would like to push that rock. Goodbye, Lassiter, Venters said. Venters went back to Bess. The girl looked worried. Something's wrong, Bess. What is it? Venters asked. Bess looked at him for a moment. Then she ran to her cave. When she returned, she was carrying something in her black scarf. Bess unfolded the scarf. Something bright was shining there. Gold, Venters cried. I got it out of the stream, Bess said. Bess, this gold is worth thousands of dollars, Venters cried. Is there any more in the stream? There's lots, Bess replied. You can have it all. I didn't want to tell you about it, Bess went on. I hate gold. It makes men mad. They get angry and fight each other for gold. Perhaps you'll take the gold and leave me in the valley. Leave without you, Venters said. Listen, my sweet girl, he went on. We are not safe here, but with this gold we can go far away from Utah. I shall never leave you, Bess. I love you. I want to marry you. We'll go to my home in Illinois. We'll leave Utah forever. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Jane Witherstein was very unhappy. Her life had changed forever. She did not know what was going to happen in the future. Now Jane's only friend was Lassiter, the enemy of her people. Lassiter understood why Jane was unhappy. One evening he told Jane his thoughts. I came here because of a woman, Millie Earn, said Lassiter slowly. I stayed here because of another woman, you, Jane Witherstein. I have tried to live with your people. Lassiter went on, but I can't live here any longer. They destroyed Millie Earn, and now they are destroying you, Jane. You were strong, but they have made you weak. It's true, Jane replied. I can't fight any more. What do you mean, Jane? What are you going to do? Lassiter asked. I'll go to Dyer, Jane said. I'll tell him he has won. I've lost my riders and my cattle. I'll... Mary Tull. Then you can leave me, Lassiter. Go to Dyer. Mary Tull, Lassiter said. His face was hard with anger. 
No, you are not going to die here. I am, Lassiter said. And you are not going to marry Tull. You are going to marry me. Lassiter, Jane cried. Tell me, Jane, Lassiter went on. Did Dyer bring Millie Earn to Cottonwoods? Did he steal her from her husband? Tell me, Jane. For a moment, Jane said nothing. Then she lifted her head. She looked into Lassiter's gray eyes. Yes, she whispered. Dyer did steal Millie Earn from her husband. Then Dyer must die, Lassiter said. No, don't kill him, Jane cried. Dyer is the leader of my people. I love them. But I love you too, Lassiter. If you love me, don't kill Dyer. Please take me away from here. I cannot live with my people any longer. Jane held Lassiter in her arms. Lassiter looked down at her. I must go, Jane, Lassiter said. I am a gunman. I came to find who took Millie Earn. Dyer is that man. I must fight Dyer, but I'll be back. Be ready to leave, Jane. The village was very quiet. All the women were indoors. The men of Cottonwoods were in the meeting room. Suddenly the door of the meeting room opened. A man in black stood in the doorway. Lassiter. Lassiter and his black guns. The men of Cottonwoods had guns too, but they did not move. Lassiter looked at Dyer. Dyer stood up very slowly. He opened his mouth to speak, but he could not. Lassiter said two words. Millie Earn. And Dyer understood. He knew he was going to die. Lassiter waited. Dyer's hands moved towards his guns. He pulled the guns from his belt. He fired, but it was too late. Lassiter's black guns roared. Dyer fell to the ground. Lassiter looked down at the dead man. Then he slowly walked out of the meeting room. No one stopped him. Jane heard Lassiter's footsteps. She opened the door. Lassiter smiled. Are you all right? Jane whispered. I reckon I am, Lassiter said quietly. And Dyer? Dyer will not trouble you or any other woman again, Lassiter said. Are you ready, Jane? Yes, Jane replied. Take me away, Lassiter. Take me away. Jane and Lassiter got Black Star and Bells, Jane's two horses, from the stables. Ride, Jane Witherstein, Lassiter said. Ride fast and don't look back. I'll follow you. So Jane left Witherstein Farm and her land for the last time. The sun was going down as she rode away on Black Star. Jane smelt smoke, but she did not look back. She knew that Lassiter had set fire to Witherstein Farm. In a few minutes, Lassiter was by her side. Then Black Star and Bells galloped together across the Purple Sage. <laughs> The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Venters had been back in Surprise Valley for a few days. He climbed back down to the narrow canyon below Surprise Valley. He wanted to see Wrangell. Was he still safely hidden there? But Wrangell had gone. I think that the rustlers have our horse, Venters told Bess. This is bad news. We must leave here at once, before the rustlers find us. We'll take the donkeys. They move slowly, but the tall sage will hide us. Bess was very sad. I'm sorry to leave our beautiful valley, she said. I'll always remember our happiness here. They were soon ready to go. Bess and Venters led the donkeys down the steep opening in the rocks. They moved very slowly. Night came, and they rested, but Venters did not sleep. At dawn they went on their way again. At midday, Bess and Venters reached the purple sage. Then suddenly, out of the sage came two black horses, and riding them were Jane and Lassiter. Burn, I am pleased to see you, Jane cried. Then she saw Bess. I thought you were alone, Burn. Jane, this young woman is Bess, Lassiter said. Who's Bess? Jane asked quickly. How do you know her, Lassiter? This girl was Old Ring's masked rider, Lassiter replied. The masked rider? A girl? Jane cried. I don't believe it. 
It's true, Jane, Byrne replied. I'm taking Bess away from Utah. I love her, and I'm going to marry her. Wish us good luck, Jane. At first, Jane did not answer. Then she smiled. Good luck, Byrne. Good luck, both of you, Jane said. Lassiter took something out of his pocket. It was a locket on a gold chain. He held it out to Bess. Open the locket, Beth, Lassiter said gently. Jane, Byrne, look at the picture inside the locket, Lassiter went on quietly. Do you know the woman in the picture? It's Millie Urn, Jane said. Yes, that's Millie, Lassiter replied. Look at her eyes, Beth. Do you remember those eyes? Have you seen that face before? I've seen those eyes in my dreams, Bess whispered. Lassiter put his strong arms round the girl. Beth, he said gently, they are your mother's eyes. Millie Urn was your mother. Your name is Elizabeth Urn. It can't be true, Bess said slowly. It is true, Lassiter replied. Long ago, Dyer and your father were enemies. Dyer killed your father, Frank Urn. Frank was my best friend. Then Dyer brought you and your mother to Utah. Lassiter went on. Millie would not marry Dyer. Dyer was very angry, so he gave you to Oldring. But Oldring was kind to you, Bess. He looked after you like a father. Jane kissed Bess gently. I loved your mother, Bess. Millie Urn was my dearest friend. And now I love you, she said. I have a name at last, Bess whispered. And a family, too. Lassiter said, I am Millie's brother. That's why I came to Utah. And now we are leaving, Jane said. Dyer made my people hate me. I could not stay in Cottonwoods. Will Dyer and Tull follow you? Venters asked. Dyer is dead. I shot him, Lassiter replied. But Tull may follow us. Where are you going? Venters asked. I was coming to Surprise Valley, Lassiter replied. But we are leaving Surprise Valley, Venters said. Bess found gold in the valley. Now we are rich. We are leaving Utah. We are going to Illinois. Tull will be out on the sage, and the rustlers too, Lassiter said. You will not escape. Those donkeys are not fast enough. What shall we do, Bess? Venters asked. Shall we go or stay? Let's go, Bess replied. Good, Jane said. You will be free and happy and you will have a fast ride. Fast? Lassiter asked. Yes, Jane said. Burn and Bess, I give you my horses, Black Star and Bells. Lassiter and I will take the donkeys. No, Venters cried. Tull will catch you easily, and there are rustlers out on the sage. Listen, Burn, Lassiter said. Jane is right. You need these horses to get out of Utah. We'll go to Surprise Valley for a while. Now hurry. Thank you, Jane. You are a good woman, Venters said. I'll take Bess safely away from Utah, I promise. If you see Tull, hide in the sage, Lassiter told him. Then when he is gone, follow the trail to the north. Black Star and Bells are the fastest horses on the sage. Lassiter turned to Bess. I found you and lost you at the same time, Bess Earn, he said. Goodbye. Elizabeth, Bess, be happy, Jane said. Bess and Venters got up onto Black Star and Bells. Then they waved as they galloped away. Goodbye, cried Jane. Goodbye, Byrne and Bess, riders of the Purple Sage. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want. Black Star and Bells galloped for many miles, but there was still danger for Bess and Venters. Bess looked back. Burn, look, she said. Far away was a line of horsemen. They're not rustlers, Bess said. One man's riding a white horse. That's Tull, Venters said. I think he's seen us. He'll know these are Jane's horses, Bess said. What shall we do? Let's ride north and go around the riders, Bess said Venters. Then we'll go west. Now gallop, Bess. 
Black Star and Bells galloped like the wind. They flew through the sage. Tull and his men began to follow Bess and Venters. Tull knew Venters. He shot at him several times, but Black Star and Bells were too fast. Tull and his men were soon far behind. Bess and Venters escaped. Bess, we're free, Venters cried. We're alone on the sage. No one can find us now. The sun was going down, and the sky was red. We'll ride all night, Venters said. This is the last time you will see the purple sage, Bess. Suddenly there was a strange sound, very far away. What's that, Bess? Can you hear it? Venters asked. It was a strange roaring sound, like thunder, but the sky was clear. There were no storm clouds. Then all was quiet. Jane and Lassiter watched Bess and Venters ride away. They've gone, Lassiter said at last. They're safe now, but we're not. Come on, Jane. Jane and Lassiter rode the donkeys along the trail to Surprise Valley. After a long time, they left the sage behind them. Sometimes they rode through trees. Sometimes they rode between walls of rock. Then the valley became narrower. The walls of rock were higher now. Suddenly, Jane and Lassiter heard horses behind them. Tull and his men were on their trail. At last, Lassiter and Jane reached the opening in the rock wall. They got down off the donkeys and led them upwards. The donkeys climbed slowly and carefully. The sun was going down now. Lassiter reached the balancing rock and looked back. Jane came up behind him. Lassiter, look, Jane said, pointing down. Tull and his men are close behind us. Tull and his men were climbing up the opening in the rock. We can't escape. What can we do, Lassiter? Jane cried. What can we do? Lassiter put his hands on the balancing rock. There is a way to stop Tull, Lassiter said. I can push this rock. Tull and his men will die, but we'll be shut in here forever. What shall I do, Jane? Push the stone, Lassiter. Push the stone, Jane cried. Lassiter pushed. With all his strength, he pushed and pushed. The huge rock moved from side to side. Then it fell. At first, the rock fell slowly. Then it went faster and faster. It crashed down the narrow opening. Other rocks crashed down with it. There was a roaring sound. The air was full of dust and falling rocks. Tull and his men screamed, but there was no escape. The rocks covered them. Jane and Lassiter were safe. Far away, Bess and Venters heard a sound like thunder. The way into Surprise Valley was closed forever. The picture sequence from the cinema has finished. You can look at it once more if you want.